of a sexual nature. Hey, Emma, you filthy slag. Billy, that's a horrible thing to say. No, it isn't. It's a Cockney thing to say. <laughs> I'm working on a brief for Cockney cheese. I have to write a slogan that conveys the excitement and adventure of biting into a piece of cheese that comes from the heart of Cockney London. Target market, empty nesters who like dairy products, most particularly cheese. <laughs> it's brown. Why have they made brown cheese? How have they made brown cheese? It's probably best not to ask how. <laughs> but bear in mind, Emma, there are no cows in London. It smells oddly familiar, sort of tangy. How are you going to persuade anyone to buy this stuff? Well, you know how it is with slogans. You want to convey the experience of the product in the fewest words possible. I have definitely smelt this before. So, <laughs> how to convey the experience of biting into a piece of cheese from London that's brown and smells of Cockney testicles. Oh. <laughs> and what did you come up with? Cockney cheese, leave it out! <laughs> Look, I've put nine exclamation marks after the word at to make it seem a bit more modern. And which unlucky account director has to sell this to the client? Please say it isn't me. When a slogan is as good as this, a balloon with a face drawn on it could sell it. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're all out of balloons. Hey, Greg, you ready to sell my slogan? Billy, I am ready to sell the arse out of your slogan. That's right, I said arse. That's how confident I am. Just try your best, mate. That's all anyone can ask. Cockney cheese. Leave it out! <laughs> Cockneys do say that, don't they? So it's funny, because it's true. <laughs> it's like a Cockney man is out strolling somewhere in Cockney, London, probably off to buy a shooter or something like that, <laughs> and he comes across a piece of Cockney cheese, and he can't believe it. Cockney cheese? Live out! <laughs> <laughs> also, cheese is much more flavoursome when you leave it out of the fridge. So it's both a very snappy line and a serving suggestion. <laughs> Just sell it, Greg. Yes, yes, I will. I will sell this slogan. Confident, Greg? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I'm really frightened of the Cockney cheese client, Cockney Jim. He's just so massively Cockney. What, loud, friendly, wears a pinky ring, a little bit racist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Greg, Clive wants to see us in his office. Come on. <laughs> How can we dance while the world is turning? <laughs> How can we sleep while our beds are burning? <laughs> How can we dance while the world is turning? <laughs> How can we sleep while our beds are burning. <laughs> Answer the question, Bannister. Um, well, we, we probably couldn't, sir, because of all the crackling and the smoke and the fumes. Don't and... actually answer it, <laughs> orthopedic shoe. <laughs> Guys, I'm not happy with your work. There's a review of your latest advert in the trade press, and the reviewer really sticks it to you. You wrote this review, Mr Johnson. <laughs> I know, and it worries me that I did. <laughs> Guys, you haven't sold a good advert since that, um, the one about makeup. Oh, Max Factor, building unrealistic hopes since 1926. <laughs> Sir, I don't like to point the finger, but this is all Greg's fault. That is not true. I can't sell Billy's work because it's never the work the client asked for. Yeah, of course it's never the work the client asked for. They always think their product is amazing. And the best advert is a huge picture of it with the slogan, You am likey this thing. <laughs> Yeah, but the last time I showed one of your ads to Cockney Jim, he asked, at what point does being creative cross over into actually being gay? <laughs> Good question. Billy, what's the point at which that happens? Um, I think it's when you start having sex with other men, sir. Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> OK, guys, I'm going to give you some advice. It's Aussie advice, so that means top secret. 
Like that thing about there being no opera house inside the Sydney Opera House. Isn't there? <laughs> opera. In Australia, Greg. I don't think so, mate. <laughs> the building is solid all the way through, like a Toblerone. We only made it as a joke. <laughs> uh, your advice, sir? Guys, you're familiar with the your mum cusses? Oh, yes. Your mum's like a bowling ball. When she gets fingered, she comes back for more. <laughs> not, not your mum, Mr Johnson. I mean, one's mum. My mum. <laughs> yes, my mum's like a bowling ball. She, she's, she's round, she lives in an alley. <laughs> and for five pounds, anyone can roll with her for half an hour. <laughs> Sorry, mum. Guys, scrum down. If you've got a tricky client, sleep with their mum. <laughs> Imagine that you were in some sort of face-off with someone and then you said, yeah, but I slept with your mum and you actually had done it. <laughs> There's no coming back from that line. Right, well, I'm glad that's sorted. We'll be on our way then. If you need leverage, sleep with their mum. Unless you need leverage with Greg's mum, then get a crane. Ooh, <laughs> snap! <laughs> Emma, fetch me a head-shaped balloon and a marker pen, please. Bad meeting. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Everybody, Keaton has entered the room, and it looks like he's got something intriguing to tell us. I wonder what it can be. Something intriguing, you say? Gosh, that does sound intriguing. Absolutely correct, noisy, close horse girl. <laughs> now, riddle me this. Why is it that recently I seem so fantastic at my job as head of Global? Is it because you've smoked your lunch? <laughs> no. The reason I seem so fantastic is because I've started to carry around with me this big pencil. <laughs> You know how we all make snap judgments about the people we meet? I'm doing it right now. Well, those snap judgments are based on superficial surface details, OK? But if we control the superficial surface details with props... Ah, oh, hello. <laughs> then we can control the snap judgments that people make about us. So when people see your big pencil, what snap judgments are they supposed to make? Well, they immediately assume that I'm an important alpha male and that they should do everything I say. <laughs> and also that I have a large penis. Ah, oh, well, that's nice. Hey, Billy, you could get a prop to make you seem creative. You know, an earring, perhaps, or a crack pipe. <laughs> Emma, you could get one to make you seem popular. <laughs> Popular. <laughs> Chini Reconde. Billy? No, you're not popular. What? What? Why are you taking offence? You're always telling me how much you dislike everyone. I know I dislike everyone, but I still expect them to like me, those bastards. <laughs> Emma, the other girls don't like you. It's to do with the way you look and your personality. <laughs> look, Emma, obviously we like you, but if you don't like anyone else, why do you care if you can't make other friends? You think I can't make other friends? Well, I... well, you are wrong. You are dead wrong. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make a friend and then he'll be sorry, huh? huh? Is it the person that you tried to make friends with? <laughs> Trouble with the phone, Jim? I can't get reception. <laughs> All the tall buildings, I suppose. No. It's cos I just smashed it to pieces on my desk. <laughs> well, I, I've got a Cockney Cheese slogan to show you, Jim, and when you see it, I really think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. It, it, it's a slogan that's fast and modern. It's got way too many exclamation marks after it. <laughs> Cockney Cheese! Leave it out! <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> a Cockney man is strolling along somewhere in Cockney London, down the strand doing a lamb before we're having a banana. <laughs> when he comes across some cockney cheese and it surprises him. Cockney cheese, leave it out. Well, yes, that's it exactly. Um, it's also a serving suggestion about the best temperature but to... Greg, if he's a cockney man strolling along in cockney London, why would he be surprised to find cockney cheese? Well, he wouldn't, would he? More likely, he'd be delighted because Cockney cheese is the best cheese in the world and I can prove it by stabbing anyone who says it isn't. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's probably not meant to be read like that. Greg, 
This slogan is calling me a pilchard right to my face. <laughs> I can't think why you're showing it to me other than you're trying to make me commit some diabolical violence. Jim, let me explain. No, let me explain. I'm going to close my eyes now, and when I open them again, anyone who is still in this room and called Greg is going to get sacked from my account. And by sacked from my account, I mean chopped into little bits cooked in my Breville toaster, then sacked from my account. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jim, this is silly. Can we do it? <laughs> <laughs> that none of you like me, but it doesn't say why. Well, you said that survey was a secret. This sort of thing is exactly why we don't like you. Ah, lying to people. <laughs> Any other reason? You're vindictive. You're snotty. You walk around like you own the place. You're always playing with your hair. You're rude. Oh, yeah, no, I am a bit, aren't I? Oh, and you're the old woman that looks like an old man. Keep them straight through the agency, carrying his big pencil, and all the girls look on in amazement. They are frightened. And yet excited, too. <laughs> hey, you girls, my name is Keaton, and I am very strong. Hmm? Look how far I can throw this stapler. Whoa! That's got to be some kind of world record, isn't it? <laughs> hey, did you know? You can tell a lot about what someone is like in bed by watching the way they walk through a door. <laughs> now, excuse me, while I walk through this door, tell a lot about what a great mate someone would make by watching the way they carry a pot plant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's all. <laughs> right. Who here likes me now? Hey, Billy. I didn't sell that slogan just like you asked me not to. So I suppose we'll have to sleep under the arches and live off cardboard and heroin. <laughs> I didn't ask you not to tell that slogan, Greg. Not in so many words, but you did say, try your best, that's all anyone can ask. Well, I tried my best. Turns out it just wasn't good enough. Hey-ho, at least I tried. What do you mean, at least I tried? This isn't the Special Olympics, Greg. This is advertising. <laughs> go and get that slogan sold. I can't go back to Cockney Jim. He said he was going to cut me into little pieces and cook me in his Breville toaster. Greg, you know how these marketing people exaggerate. He'll probably just... Cut you into medium pieces and chuck you in the canal. <laughs> I've made a friend. The cleaning lady doesn't count, Emma. Oh, all right, anyway, Mrs. Thingy. Do I still get my money? Shut up, not in front of him. <laughs> Greg, there's a man looking for you. He's wearing a car coat and he smells of aftershave and cheese. Oh, Christ, it's Cockney Jim. How did he find me? Uh, you work here? Damn, I bloody do as well. Greg, <laughs> don't worry, it'll be fine. Just tell him you've listened to his comments, that they were very, very useful, and then show him the exact same slogan, but written in a slightly more amusing type font and with a few more exclamation marks. Billy, that's a brilliant plan. High 15, everyone! <laughs> Greg, the man behind the man behind the man behind the pile of crap I keep getting shown instead of an advertising slogan. How horrible it is to see you, you massive Ken Holm. <laughs> and Mr Jim, I didn't realise we had a meeting. We didn't. But I was passing in a very slow-moving Cockney funeral cortege. <laughs> but I'd step in and see where you got to with my slogan. Then rejoin them about five yards further down the street. Right. Well, Jim, um, we took on board all your comments, and I think you'll like what we've done. I, I don't often use the phrase, thunder, thunder, thundercats, but <laughs> when I saw this slogan, that's exactly what I said. And it isn't the same slogan you showed me before, is it, written in a slightly more amusing type font? <laughs> um... Because if you showed me that, I would have to ram my hand so far down your throat I could mug about in your breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I always say, Jim. It's not about the work, it's about the people. 
So let's become really great mates. Or, or as you Stepney gentlemen say, Chinas. Chinas! Yes, let's do it, Greg. Let's get drunk and night the badger. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> That's what we do in the East End, Greg. We get pissed up on lager, we knight the badger, we chop off its head and plant its skull on a dustbin as a warning to the others. Good. That's great. Ah, oh, I love culture. I'm joking with you, Greg, you big plum duff. Oh, <laughs> I see. Yes, a joke. Ah, oh, jokes are brilliant. Now, come here. We're China's and China's hug. <laughs> yes? Or we could just shake hands enthusiastically. No, Greg, it's time for the man hug. 20 long seconds of pure man on man, close contact, heterosexuality. <laughs> I'm going to close my eyes now, and when I open them again, I want us to be hugging. He's still trying to make a friend. Because there's a Cockney man in there who loves making them. He's a dead cert. Really? <laughs> I'm going to make a friend. Hello, Governor. <laughs> Hello, sir. You wanted to roar at me. Yes, great. <laughs> Come on in, mate. Come on. Sit down here. There we go. Thank you, sir. Will that be all? Yes. Thanks, Greg. Great. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing. I hear you ran away from a meeting, Greg. What are you, Tom Sawyer? Were you scrumping apples? Are you getting chased by some angry bees? You tried to hug me, sir. And the only time I get that close to someone is when I'm making sweet love with a lady. What if my machinery thought something was happening that wasn't happening? I just thought it was better that I run away and he suspect I was weird than I hug him and he knew I was for certain. <laughs> because my penis had become engorged with blood. <laughs> yeah, I get the idea, Greg. I'm just disgusted into silence, you sick puppy. <laughs> but I had a brilliant brainwave, sir. I sent Emma to make friends with him instead of me. You sent Emma? the least popular girl in the agency, to schmooze the client instead of you. Greg, give me 13 good reasons why I shouldn't sack you right now! Um, because I'm punctual, I'm polite, I'm clean, enthusiastic, I'm tough, but fair, I'm mature, I'm kind to animals, I have a winning smile, and I, 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 I can dance the fandango, and, and... Oh. <laughs> Do you love throwing things at me, sir? <laughs> OK, Greg, you're boring. Get back to your desk and sell that slogan, you bum rust. <laughs> he's funny, he's ambitious, he smells of musky cheese. Hey, Emma, you made friends with Cockney Jim. I didn't just make friends with him, Greg. I went one better. I got off with him. <laughs> now who's the popular one, huh? Rachel? Rachel, who is it? My name's Josephine. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> wow, look at you, Emma. Getting ahead by using your body. Just like a prostitute does. <laughs> Greg, that is so sexist. Why? Because I'm a woman and I don't like it. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, does this mean that you can get Cockney Jim to buy the slogan? Could anyone refuse this face? Well, those girls did earlier when you wanted to be friends, and there was that time you tried to snog the postboy. Yeah, shut up, shut up, Greg. All right, the answer is no. No one could refuse this face. So, I'll leave the slogan with you, and you'll definitely sell it then. Yeah, yeah. Just leave it with me and my face. <laughs> Well done, boys. <laughs> I five Emma. Were you just talking to your stuff? I five Emma. <laughs> wow, I've never I fived after sex before. Or perhaps you've not played the right scene. <laughs> well, anyway, I saw that new slogan from the agency. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's not funny at all. And now that I have let you sleep with me, I want you to get it fixed. 
You let me sleep with you. Yeah. I could see that you wanted some of the gym. What girl doesn't? <laughs> and I figured a hoity-toity bird like you might be good for my image, like Beckham marrying Posh Spice. You were sleeping with me to advance your career. That's right. With your help, I'm gonna sell kin loads of Cockney cheese to the middle classes. Then everyone in the East End will love me, and I'll be crowned king of pearly London. What I think you've done there, Jim, and it's a mistake a lot of people make, but what I think you've done there is you've gone mad. <laughs> Half time's over, Emma. Back on a pitch. Back on a pitch, Emma. Don't say that. It's not a game of football. And as it's the second half, we're changing ends. <laughs> <laughs> Bad news, guys. Cockney Jim is sleeping with me to advance his career. Why would he do that? You're not important. I well, you know I'm not, but I always act like I am. And anyway, I'm posh and I've got nice hair and he's cockney and he mistook that for actual power. You haven't solved the slogan either, have you? No. Oof, oh, God! My name is Keaton, and anyone who doesn't want to have sex with me had better hurry on out the back there. <laughs> but you're only delaying the inevitable. <laughs> Keaton, we're kind of in the middle of something here. Billy, do you know how much chick I'm getting? I think I've reached chick tipping point. I don't even have to chat them up anymore. The ladies just feel they have to get off with me because that's what ladies do. Like a life stage on the road to womanhood. You know, Keaton, I am really going to miss you when you go to prison. You know, that gives me an idea, Keaton. Could you recommend a prop for me to help me overcome my fear of Cockney Jim? Of course I could, Greg. I'm always happy to help my friends. I'm like Jesus in that respect. And in some other ways, too. <laughs> there you are, Greg. Ah, Billy Hitchens. You think you're brave, but I'm really brave. Oh, God. Look at my mad, unblinking eyes. They've got success written all over them. Greg, please tell me you're not drunk. I'm not drunk. OK, but are you drunk? It's my new strategy for success. Greg, getting drunk isn't a strategy. It's what you do when you run out of strategies. <laughs> How did this happen? Keaton recommended a prop to give me courage. The keg of beer, <laughs> shouting tramp strength. Greg, you know you've got a meeting but with Cockney Jim, don't you? Mmm. I'm powerful and virile, Billy. <laughs> you know the Lion King? That was based on me. But don't tell anyone, or they will become afeared. Greg, what's going to happen when we put you in front of the client? I'm strong like the mighty O! All right, shut up. I need to think. Oh, I've been thinking too, Billy. I've been thinking, why am I afraid of these cockneys with their cheeriness and their cups of tea? Secretly, they are a nervous people, overawed by we the middle classes. In fact, they want to become like us. And once they've become like us, they want to move to St Albans and buy their daughter a pony. Right, great, OK. I'm going to go and sell the slogan to the client myself. And Keaton got us into this mess. Keaton can help get us out. Hey, hello. Can you lend me some people a cup of tea? I'll give it back to you. Don't walk away from me. I exist. I am a person too. <laughs> Get it done. She smelled the marzipan and then she wanted to taste the raisins. Great. Well done, mate. <laughs> He's coming. Look powerful. Billy! You dress wearing upper class lady. Jim. Uh, Keaton! You crazy Frenchman. I'm not French. Keaton. All foreign people are French. <laughs> Actually, um, before we start, Jim, Keaton has got some news which I think might have an impact on this meeting. Keaton. Thank you, Billy. Yes, Jim. <clears throat> Rather interestingly, since we last met, I've had your mum. <laughs> what? I've had your mum. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you know your mum, as in your mum jokes. Well, I've had her. <laughs> You had sex with my mum? Yep. But she's, she's, she's an old lady. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> I expect this leaves you feeling pretty wrong-footed, doesn't it, Jim? 
Well, why would you do that? Can I take that one? You see, Jim, like most foreign people, Keaton is a colossal pervert. <laughs> Some mornings he can hardly get his trousers on, isn't that right, Keaton? <laughs> I'm crazy with the continental urges. So he saw your mum, instinct kicked in, and he gave her the seeing to of her long cockney life. Well, well that's disgusting. I touched her shame place. <laughs> But I think the point is that we have got a lot to get through today, and while there's going to be a certain amount of toing and froing, hopefully we can cut through most of that by always remembering that Keaton has had your mum. I've had your mum. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me you had sex with my mother in order to sell an advert? Yep. Anyway, if as a result of this news you begin to view Keaton as some sort of father figure and you want to take his advice on things, then, Jim, I really think you should go with that. Look, my father is my father figure, not this imbecile. Ah, yes. George has gentle hands. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you too insane? <laughs> Sorry, so you don't feel particularly more inclined to approve our slogan as a result of these revelations, then? You slept <laughs> with my mum. If it's any consolation, Jim, I'm a very considerate lover. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Do you know what? I think you're probably not going to buy anything today, are you, Jim? No. So maybe, maybe Keaton and I should just leave in disgrace? Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, because I don't think this meeting can get any worse. I'm not afraid of you, Cockney Jim. I'm brave. Oh, but suddenly it does. <laughs> I'm going to hug. You, Albert Square Man, so help me, I'll do it. What are you doing, Greg? I'm brave. I'm brave. Get off me. Oh, we're hugging. Ah. We're hugging. Ah. We're hugging. Ah. Oh, dear, my machinery thought something was happening that wasn't happening. <laughs> I've done a bad thing. <laughs> hmm. Is this how you thought the plan would work out, Billy? Seems like a very strange way to hand in your notice. <laughs> Keaton sleeps with our client's mum. Greg gets drunk and tries to hug forward slash rape him. <laughs> and Billy Hitchens has organised the whole thing. Now, normally, I like to let my boot do the talking and your asses do the listening. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to use an idea of Keaton's. Props. Oh, well done, Keaton. Billy, I want you to wear this. I'm with stupid, and there's an arrow pointing up at me. It's because you're stupid, Billy. Do you get it? You have the whole... <laughs> or are you too stupid? <laughs> Greg, got you a bread bin. Oh, what's that for, sir? <laughs> Keaton, give me that big pencil of yours, Mr. <laughs> 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 I think this is a bit more appropriate. <laughs> oh, my power's draining from me, fading away like tears in the rain. How did it go? My pencil looks like it just thought about Jodie Marsh. <laughs> We've still got our jobs. <laughs> Take that, Justice, you crazy blind woman. And I also have good news. Cockney Jim has dumped me and he said he just wants to be friends. Hey, so you made a friend? Yep. Oh, and to show there's no hard feelings, he gave me this. Cockney chocolate. But it's yellow. Why have they made yellow chocolate? How have they made yellow chocolate? <laughs> Smells strangely familiar. <laughs> I'm frightened. <laughs> Comedy tomorrow at 10 on BBC Two with the most recent round of QI. We need answers on BBC Four now, but can Camilla Dallarup and Terry Christian handle the questions? Neatly here. What a goal! Saved by Robinson and Blackburn Rovers are into the semi-final.
The first silverware of the season is in sight. Two nights of League Cup semi-finals. Manchester City v Manchester United and Aston Villa v Blackburn Rovers. Tuesday at 8 and Wednesday at 7.30 on BBC One and Radio 5 Live. Join Dan Snow on a voyage to sea. The nation's new destiny lay out there on the oceans. To discover how the Royal Navy drove Britain into the modern age. The Navy expanded to become the most complex industrial enterprise on Earth. It transformed our economy, our sense of national identity and our democracy. England's view of its place in the world would never be the same again. Empire of the Seas, Friday at 9. <laughs> This is BBC Two, and with Newsnight tonight, it's 